Hi there, my name is Ricky Pound and I collect mice and porcelain. I've been collecting for about four years, have about 35 pieces, and I wanted to share some of them with you today. I'm not an expert on the subject. Uh, it is a field where you get to know a little bit more, I suppose, every day as you read. And so I can tell you a few things about the pieces, but I should not be considered an expert in any degree or capacity. Uh, so I'm looking forward to showing you these these uh, wares that date really from around 1723. I do have a few pieces of the 19th century, but nothing really to write home about. Uh, it's going to be one take if possible. So please uh, forgive any mistakes that I make along the way. Uh, and I'm trying to do this in, in one go. So let's get on with it. Cheers. The earliest piece I think I have is this lovely saucer. You'll notice, first of all, it's got no cross swords. They were either missed or, or this is an early piece. I believe this to be around 1723, 1724. Unfortunately, it's missing its cup, but I do have the saucer. One way of showing that uh, it's an early piece is the three iron red concentric circles around the outside, which you can see on the right. You can also see a Gilders number of 39. Now, Gilders largely applied their, either their initials or their numbers to the pieces that they provide gilding on. It was largely towards the end of the uh, completion process between around 1720 and 1750, maybe 1760. So you put all that together and you know you've got an early piece. Uh, it's particularly interesting in that it's a landscape scene. Largely before that, you get the Shinrazari scenes, the kind of Western take on what they feel that Oriental figures look like, because of course you don't come uh, into, uh, in, into contact with them very often. So this kind of whimsical take on Chinese or Chin Razari you get from the likes of Herald at this time, very entertaining. I don't have any of those pieces at the moment. I would like to get them in the future. But this is an early example of the kind of landscape scene. So you've got the, 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 the low horizon. Another feature here, which again shows it to be quite early, are the little puffs of blue in the sky which you kind of get at this particular time till around 1740, something like that, in this kind of this lovely gilded cartouche with the uh, uh, Botka luster uh, around the outside and the lovely li little flowers in purple and red there as well. Very, very nice. The second example I'm going to uh, give you is around the same kind of time, maybe a little bit later. You've got these uh, three vignettes with scenes, landscape scenes again, predominantly of ports and harbours, which was a common theme taken from Dutch and Italian engravings, which I really do love on these kind of wares. In the middle, you have a couple in puce looking out again towards the harbour. And also what's very nice here is the use of flowers and, mo and uh, insects that you can see on the porcelain as well, painted very, very nicely with some gilding around the outside. And on the back or the reverse, the base, you have the simple, uh, basically, signs of Meissen, which are the cross swords. There is no gilders mark here. I can't see an impression mark. There probably is one somewhere. Uh, but, and in this third example, you've kind of got, again, you've kind of got the, the, the quatrefold vignette with grand tourists or soldiers looking at a ruin, surrounded again by this, uh, or along the edge, this bodka luster, very nice, again with reds and purples. And on the base, you've got the, uh, a longer cross swords with M, which is the initial for the, uh, for the gilder. And you've got these lovely flowers, these uh, Indianish bloomen flowers that you see on the on, on the rear there. You also find them in cups as well. Example again is a little bit more decorative. It's one of my favourites. Very distinctive uh, gilding around the outside, this uh, vodka luster. Oriental figures in the centre. You've got these lovely little bits of blue in the sky again picked out. Uh, again, the reds, the purples in a very nice framed uh, picture. 
And on the back, you've got the three iron red concentric circles I spoke about earlier. You've got the number 76 Gilders mark. You've got the cross sword. So again, this piece is probably probably from around 1735, something. And we have from the same set that we've just seen, actually, the cup with the Gilders mark 76 with the cross swords again. And in the middle, again, you can see the uh, Indian Ish Blumen and the vodka luster around the outside. Very, very lovely little cup. And another teacup here, this one with scenes of ships coming into port. Again, you've got your gilding, you've got your reds, and you've got your various other colours, and you turn it over. You've got 53 here as a gilder's mark, and you've got cross swords with curved, uh, curved blades towards the bottom. Uh, and then as we we have a look inside we've got this lovely little scene of a fisherman with a couple of birds on the lake one above and framed within double concentric red circles and moving slightly on we're talking here probably about 1750 possibly 1760 uh, hand-painted birds of paradise well of course Meissen is known for all the hand painting that went on in their studios tough job for the uh, people working there. These are birds of paradise, they're all different. And Meissen also had this thing, you would never really see the same scene painted on a plate, for instance, or a saucer, and then onto a cup. It would always be slightly different. And then around the outside, you've got this lovely gilding and uh, blue uh, Japanese wave, as they called it. There's various patterns at this time, but this is one of my favourites. And if we turn this one now, this is one of my favourite types of porcelain, very much based on Chinese examples. This is Blanc de Chine in the white with moulded flowers that you can see applied to the reverse of these saucers. These date from around 1740. Interestingly, if you pick them up, they're not straight. They are wonky. Uh, it took them a while to actually get them flattened and presentable, really. The ones before this are even more wonky if you look at the ones from around 1720, 1730. But what is really interesting is the ones that predate the swords are often confused with uh, Chinese export wares because they are so good in terms of imitations. Uh, the quality is superb and that is why one of the reasons I like this type of porcelain from my And if we flip them over, this is the plain uh, side that you can see here. Now this is also one of my favourite ones. This is a very, very small uh, teacup. Uh, it's decorated in puce, beautiful decoration, very finely painted. Uh, it's gilded inside with, with botka lusterware. You can see the uh, the gilding as well, painting onto the, the, the base there. And early cross swords with the number 38. Now, it's difficult to give you an idea how small this piece actually is. It is incredibly small, and I'd love to see the rest of the set. And here we have another uh, another saucer from uh, around 1740, maybe a little bit earlier. And this has been painted outside of the, the factory. There was a whole school of people uh, prepared, workmen, craftsmen, to take mice and seconds uh, or basically overproduction of mice and that mice and couldn't paint themselves and then go away and date it and this one's by a particular uh, particularly famous uh, artist known as Bayer he had his own studio uh, he signed it with an M you can see the M there and he's ingeniously used the cross swords uh, to create that M and you've got these beautiful flowers uh, particularly the purple ones in the in the center Talking of puce, this is another one. This is a pin, a pin dish from around 1740, maybe 1750. The scenes are very romantic. Uh, they they are based on the painter, the French painter uh, Watteau. Often they incorporate obelisks or funerary urns or very occasionally pyramids. And I love this kind of uh, this kind of painting, the atmosphere, the neoclassicism of it all, which is so typical of the age of the 18th century, particularly 1750 onwards. And on the right, you can see the cross swords of Meissen and the Gilders initial of N. To this one, it's, again, it's in puce. This is from about 1760 as well. Notice the lack of decoration in terms of gilding around the outside, apart from the rim. By this time, mice are starting to cut back on their gilding. 
and some people prefer this you, you can see the whiteness of the porcelain which tends to be in my opinion a lot whiter than the Chinese porcelain uh, as well very very finely decorated with these neoclassical scenes again with figures from Watto you will notice the behind the gentleman you've got an obelisk there's another obelisk actually on the other side of the cup you've got a funerary urn as well and here's a little bit more decoration just showing you the workmanship the craftsmanship not only of the cup but the quality of the painting is quite exceptional puce again here and again another Watto scene of a pair of lovers one with a gun he's obviously shooting with a lovely neoclassical urn on a uh, on a pediment beside her we've got again flowers finely painted inside the cup and going back to the saucer you've got this kind of green check border and Meissen did like their borders they had several different times throughout the 18th century and this is one of my favorites over we can see the cross swords notice that there is no dot between the hilts as yet so this isn't uh, this isn't the dot period or the academic period as it was known as this is slightly before so we're talking about 1755 1760 something like that and here we have a pair of quatrefoil shaped uh, pin dishes the one on the left is earlier than the one on the right the one on the left is typically around 1740 1745 again you've got these lovely iron red borders framing the composition of the painting uh, the dish itself looks like a flower it, it's got that form to it very nice and they are studying ruins as you, as you tend to do at this particular time in in mice and porcelain and the one on the right is of a rural scene it's a countryside scene uh, of people working on this very rustic building and again you've got this decoration framing the edge which is green and white which is and if we flip them over as well the one on the left you will see has got the letter, the letter D which is a, a gilder's initial and on the right we have the pot the, the, the dot between the swords for the dot or and this is one that I've just got I've just bought actually it actually hasn't arrived yet again we've got another treatment here and a, a, another arrangement around the border this is a kind of Greek key or hermetic cross type band again in puce lovely flowers and then on the, the the other side you've got gilders either N or Z and you've got the beginnings of the academic or dot period there with the dots between the uh, the swords and another one another puce one this one again is dot period and it shows a, a bird of some description all hand painted all very nice again notice the lack of gilding around the outside and the one on the right is interesting you've got various flowers here and as we will see when we flip it over we have more gilding and this was for we think the eastern market particularly the Turkish market and you'll see it's got a star rather than a dot so this is the Marcolini period rather than the dot period slightly before and moving on to some more some more lovely paintings of the dot period again I will talk about just just mention the, the lack of gilding around the outside but uh, all the attention is focused therefore on the white background and the gorgeous scene in front with this bridge with neoclassical urns someone's painting there a ship's coming in and again the uh, Indian East Blumen flowers inside the cup on the back you'll just be able to make out the dot between the uh, other one probably from this series as well we've got grand tourists or traders uh, one I think is either smoking a pipe or he's got a small telescope with a ship behind him looking uh, towards some imaginary castles and again another lovely cup with Indian East Blumen uh, inside and there's the back with the, uh, the cross swords and the dot between and another one probably from the the same series very very simple this one it's a boat scene a couple of fishermen to the left boats coming in and again if you turn that over you've got the dot between the swords so probably around 1760 70. and moving on to the uh, Marcolini period just wanted to show you this this is one of my favorite cups I bought for about 15 pounds on eBay a few years ago absolutely beautiful and it's difficult to actually get an idea of the quality of the painting on these particular items this is just superb look at the little dog and of course you've got this lovely pink uh, Japanese wave band around the outside there's another one we've got a fallen tree there's the doggy look 
are beautifully decorated. And that's it. Thank you for listening.